talk about interior light and the use of grays. An artist is often valued because of his use of grays. So this is a very important aspect of painting and color mixing. I generally have even a larger palette and what I'd like to do is show you some of the rich grays that I am going to use today in this painting. I've chosen a scene where the light is inside the painting which draws the viewer's eye in and the I did a quick study in just about half an hour of the actual scene and I haven't developed it yet, but I've got the the canvas here that I'm going to work on. So what I'm going to do is show you on my palette, the cools on the left, the warms on the top, how you can mix interesting grays. This is a mixture of ultramarine blue and cadmium orange and white. This is a mixture of uh, viridian green I'll put it here, and alizarin crimson or crinacridone red plus white, and if it's too bright and purplish, you can tone it down with a little bit of yellow ochre. So you get all kinds of interesting shades of gray. You, you want a yellow gray, a green gray, a purple gray, a blue gray, and a pink rose gray. All sorts of families of grays. You don't want to buy a tube of gray and think you've got it because that'll never do. So we always mix and burnt sienna plus ultramarine blue make a nice gray. There's there's only two colors that I don't think mix up well. A sap green doesn't mix up light colors very well. But your basics are always safe. Okay, I thought I'd show you the medium that I use is this uh, Gamblin Neo Megilp, and I love it because you could put it on your palette and you don't need to have a jar. It also comes in a tube, so that's very handy to take on location painting. An on location is always your best source. It's rare to find a good quality photo that duplicates exact, uh, exact color in nature, but there's ways around that. If you've painted enough from nature, at least 500 small paintings under your belt, then you can call yourself a plein air painter and you can successfully work from photographs and put the life into it that you saw in nature. So I'm going to just start real quick here with, um, and I use a Gamblin um, Gamsaw for cleaning the brushes. So I'm going to start with some of the grays that I've already uh, previously mixed that I told you about before and establish some of the shadow patterns in the uh, painting. And then from there we'll go to uh, the light source. I like to get a little of the light source established in the beginning just for reference. So you don't always start, I know you've probably heard start with the darkest dark first, but in some cases I don't. I start with the grays and, and work into it. So it's a lay-in mainly. But I'll, I'll switch to the largest. I love the Lang Nickel Sables uh, for the lands. And this one is going to be, I'm going to lay in a little bit of the sky because I like a reference point of the lightest light, which is you generally the sky. So even that much is enough for me to continue going further.
then I, I can either paint the entire sky or just a portion of it. Oh, I, I also, along the way, I have started on a toned ground, painting ground, the canvas is white and I, I like to kill the white, <laughs> not absolutely kill the white because it's easier on your eyes and you can see your values better. So what I do, and it helps to use the different size brushes, but I start with a toned ground and I use either a, a burnt sienna wash, maybe I add a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson and a little uh, dioxazine purple, but I keep it light and wipe it off with a rag and I use uh, turpenoid to wash in my uh, initial wash. And then I divide my canvas into thirds. You could see the reason for that. And the reason is, is so that you don't have two paintings separate from each other. If you don't divide your painting in half, it ends up with some, oftentimes, a composition where this one even looks like I'm going to extend the grass in the pathway here and angle this differently because this could be a painting by itself right in through here and then this another one. So to prevent that you have to recompose it a little bit. So I'm now going to lay in what will be the darkest dark using a little sap green well, it won't be the, the darkest dark, because the, the darkest dark will come at the very end of the painting. This is going to be a mid-tone dark, and it should be a little cooler than what I mixed. As you can see, I sort of basically Sounds crude to say scrub things in, but that's it's it's a placement issue. There's some trees in the back, and you have to be careful not to get those the same value, but we'll worry about that later. I'm going to mix a slightly lighter color uh, for these darker trees up on the hillside here. Wait a minute, they're way up here. And I'm establishing some of the darks and I'm going to speed it up a little bit and go into high gear so that you you won't get bored sitting there waiting for the paint to dry. <laughs> but this is, uh, you know, I, I've established the sky and then I'm just going to continue on with uh, the work I'm doing. There will be darker and lighter passages occurring. So here I go into high gear. Well, we're about halfway through. You can see a little bit now how the grays are utilized in the canvas, and you'll see it finished. I'm just at the, the halfway point, but I'd like to take this opportunity to show you about an upcoming event. One is you can go to my website, lynngertenbachart.com, and you could uh, sign up for the ongoing video classes where I'll be talking more in depth about materials and color mixing and whatnot and composition and what I've learned over the years. And then I have a real exciting event, Art at the Castle. 
It's going to happen July 20th through the 27th of 2019. We're taking a group of painters and their friends or spouses uh, to France to stay in a, a medieval castle in the Dordogne Valley and it's going to be very beautiful. The interior and the bedrooms are very very lush and it includes four meals a day all the wine or whatever you want so it's going to be a lot of fun so look on the website and you'll see it and thanks for visiting join lynn gertenbach's online classes and discover her many oil painting techniques on your journey to becoming a better painter lynn welcomes painters of all skill levels and welcomes your questions no matter where you live and paint, you can become a part of her painting family and benefit from more than 40 years experience. There's always something new to learn and we look forward to your participation.